Hey everyone, and welcome to the second episode in my Doodle Jump Dungeon game, where you jump around as this brown dude that looks like the thing from Star Wars. Today we're going to be adding the score counter in and making the platforms actually work, because right now, as you can see, this guy is invincible. Before we get into today's episode, I would like to thank our sponsor, Codener.io. If you want a team of instructors to review your Scratch games, then submit them in the link in the description below. Make sure to check out Codener.io today. Don't forget to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button as well, and also leave a comment down below. But anyway, let's just get coding. Alrighty, so I have two new sprites. I have one called Particles, which has a few costumes in them. The first one is called Bounce 1. It's a circle. The second one is Bounce 2, and it's just kind of squat squashed version of bounce one we have bounce three which is more squash bounce four which is more squash bounce five which is really squash bounce six which is basically a weird line then bounce seven which is a line but with weird corners then we have jump which is one costume that looks really cool i don't even know what that is but that's just a little particle that spawns when you jump and in numbers i have 10 costumes i just have zero one two three four five six seven eight and then nine and each of these costumes are named whatever their number is for instance this five here costume name is five now if you want to use my exact costumes then you can check the link in the description and click on the art project for this game which will allow you to use all my art let's start in the particles because i think they're going to be easier so go into the particles and add a when i receive new message and name this tick with a space and then a dash and then a space and now name this particles and this is the tick loop that will update the particles now we're going to go into the platforms and pull in this right here and now we have a bunch of variables now for the particles we don't want these to be named platform x and platform y so we'll go ahead and right click on platform x and rename that to particle x and you can select all that click copy click ok and now for particle y paste that in and edit the x to y so that way you don't have to type in the whole thing now there is one problem we don't actually have the go to block so all you need to do is go back into the platforms and pull in this go to right into particle and now go ahead and get rid of all of this down here now pull out a when i start as a clone and set the is clone variable that got imported from the platforms to true so now let's go ahead and create clone of myself and that doesn't work okay maybe we need to do some things first when i receive reset set the is clone to false and go ahead and delete this clone now in the when i start as a clone clear the graphic effects go to front set size to 100 percent point in direction 90 and for now we're going to go ahead and set the particle x to zero and particle y to zero as well maybe switch costume to jump well i didn't actually ever broadcast tick particles which is like the forever loop so go into the player and add a broadcast tick particles underneath the platform so now you can see that if we click create clone of myself here we go a particle pops up right in the middle instead of setting particle x and y to zero we want to set particle x to player x and particle y to player y this will make it spawn at the position of the player we want to make a brand new variable called particle type now we want to check if the particle type is equal to bounce which is our first particle type and if it is then we want to switch costume to bounce otherwise switch costume to jump in the bounce we want to change particle y by negative 30 so it goes down a bit then we want to go ahead and repeat six times which is the amount of costumes we have change the ghost effect by negative 17 so it slowly fades out in the next costume which will make it switch the costume now at the very end delete this clone let's test this out by pulling out a create clone of myself and then set the particle type to bounce so if we go ahead and do this as you can see here it makes this nice bounce particles and it actually doesn't fade out because I added a negative 17 instead of 17. So now, as you can see, it fades out like it's supposed to. For the jump, let's go ahead and change the particle Y by negative 25. So it's positioned at the player's feet. Then we want to set the size to zero, repeat 10 times, and change the size by 100 minus the size divided by 2. Change the ghost effect by 10, and then change the particle Y by 1 so it will move up slightly. After this, we want to delete the clone. So now as you can see here, we go ahead and set the particle type to jump and create the clone. It makes this cool looking jump particle. Now that we have these, we can actually program the player to spawn in these particles. So click onto the player and add a when I receive start game. Now we want to add a forever loop checking if we are touching the platforms and we need a brand new for all sprite variable called player state. Set that player state in the reset loop to animating and now we want to set 
text in this loop right here, the player state to jump. Otherwise, we want to set it to fall. So now you can see that player state will be fall most of the time. And then when we touch the platform, it will set it to jump. And we want to check if that player state is equal to jump. So if we're touching the platform and we are jumping upward, we are going to want to set particle type to bounce first. Then we want to create clone of particles, then duplicate that and set it to jump and create clone of particles. And now add a delay in between there and set it to zero seconds, which is one frame. Now you can see that every time we jump on the platform, it makes these two really cool particles that we've created. Now let's start working on the number counter. So click onto the numbers and add a when I receive reset. We're going to hide, clear the graphic effects. We need a variable for the sprite only called update counter. We're going to set the update counter to, we need another variable for all sprites called score. Make sure that's for all sprites. And we are going to set the update counter to score plus one. We want to make a for the sprite only variable called is clone set that is clone to false. Now we want to go ahead and broadcast clear numbers. And then when I receive clear numbers, delete this clone and then stop other scripts in Sprite. Now we're going to need a when I receive start game, we are going to forever if then a not equals checking if the score does not equal the update counter. I'm actually going to flip that and we are going to broadcast clear numbers. So if they're not equal to each other, we're going to clear out all of the clones. Then we need a custom block that will print it out. Now this is basically the exact same one from my number counter. So we're going to do text with a colon, string with a colon, and an input called string. Label called x with a colon and an input called x. A label called y with a colon and an input called y. So that's a position. A label called letter spacing with a colon and an input called letter spacing a label called size with a colon then an input called size and then a label called centered with a colon and then an input called center make sure you click this run screen without refresh down here now put that underneath here and set the string to print out score at 00, zero which is the center with a letter spacing of 0 0.4 a size of 100 and a centered to true now that we have this we want to set size to size. Now if else and check if the centered is equal to true and if it is then we want to go to x or leave blank for now and y y. We want to do length of string times now another times in here doing the letter spacing times the size. Now take all that times negative 0.5 which will make it go back across to the middle. Now we want to take this plus the letter spacing times size divide that by 2. So it looks something like this. And now to make this actually also take in the x input, we want to add x into that. And now if you put that in there, this will make the text be centered. Now make a for the sprite only variable called hashtag and set that number to one, which is the first digit. Now we are going to repeat the length of string, switch costume to letter that number of string, create a clone of that digit. Then it's going to change x by letter spacing times size which will make it move to the right. Then it will change the digit by one, repeating the process through all the digits. Last but not least, we are going to hide at the end. Now in a when I start as a clone, go ahead and set the is clone to true. Now forever, we're going to go ahead and go to back and then go forward three layers and also make sure to show. Okay, so let's test this out. You should see a zero is printed out right in the middle of your screen and it is also behind all of of these platforms and all of those things. I forgot to actually put a essential code piece in here, which is setting the update counter to score right here. So now if we set the score to zero, refresh the project a few times and now change it by one. Here we go, as you can see, it updates. So that was just a mistake on my part and the number counter works good. Now let's make sure that this works for the centering. So if we make it a two digit number, there we go, it still centers on the screen. So I'm gonna change it by like a big number and you can see that no matter how big it gets, it is always in the center of the screen. Now we need to make this reset in the beginning. So set the score in the player in this reset loop to zero. Now it will always set it to zero. Next, let's make it to where we can get some score. So add a when I receive 
tick player in the player of course and actually not tick player we want to do tick platform so this updates with the platforms we want to check if round score is less than round score divided by five and make sure you put the divided by in the round like this put that in there and then set the score to round score divided by five once again i was so dumb and it's actually not score in these two inputs it's scroll y so basically what that will do is if our scroll y is bigger than than our score which as you can see right now it's not it won't do anything but if it is it will set the score to that scroll y if you take this divided by a smaller number you can see that our score gets bigger quicker i like it like divided by five because i feel like it just makes more sense to take longer to get to big numbers so now that we have the score counter all working and resetting and everything let's finally get the platforms working properly so in the platforms check if platform ID equals to two, we are going to forever if we are touching the player and the player state is equal to jump, we are going to set make a new for the sprite only variable called platform yv for velocity. Make sure it's for the sprite only, of course, and go ahead and set that particle y velocity to zero. Switch costume to breakable two, which is the kind of broken piece. Set the platform ID to particle one, create clone of myself repeat 10 times change the platform y by platform yv and change the platform yv by negative two and then turn counterclockwise y velocity then at the very end do this custom block delete clone okay so let's test this out by jumping on a wooden platform to see if this works as you can see here this platform just splits in two now we need to make the other clone work as well so change this if clone id equals a five to an if else and then put an if in here and check if the platform id equals to particle one and if it does then we're going to duplicate this repeat 10 and then the set yv and switch costume to and we're going to switch costume to breakable three in here and we are going to change the platform x by negative one in here and we're going to turn clockwise then at the end we are just going to do a normal delete this clone so that way we don't change the platform count so as you can see here if we jump on a platform it will now shatter into two pieces and it'll fall off the screen and then delete themselves now for the bouncy add a forever loop and duplicate this right here be everything in there and now we have this detection working then we're going to make a for all sprite variable called jump multiplier and click ok and we're going to set that jump multiplier to two that's going to make us jump twice as high now in the player in the reset loop set the jump multiplier to one and now in the set the y speed to jump height we want Want to do that jump height times the jump multiplier and in this else we are going to set the jump multiplier to one so we need to change the touching in this right here to a if distance to player is less than 80 or we are touching the player and now if we put that in there as you can see here this will make us launch up for one time so normal jump we touch it boing and now we're back to normal jump okay so now let's move on to the spike we are going to go ahead and add a forever loop in here and check if we're touching the player and the player state is equal to jump then we're going to broadcast a new message called player spike and wait and before that we're going to set a brand new variable called game over to true and last but not least we're going to stop this script now in the reset loop of the player set the game over to false and now instead of repeat until nothing we're going to repeat until game over is equal to true so now you can see everything works the same but when we jump on the player the whole entire game actually restarts and that's really cool now we're going to at the end of this repeat 25 times duplicate all three of these and then that will just make the camera work a little bit before it resets. so that means that we can now actually make the player be able to fall off the map and not just infinitely get into this death loop so in this tick player checking for all of this stuff go ahead and check if the y speed is less than negative 40 which means we've been falling for a while set the game over to true we need to take out this tick player in this repeat 25 times instead of putting this in a tick loop let's go ahead and move this to the bottom right here and see what that does so now you can see that when we fall off boom our player just kind of does that now 
now in the player when I receive the player spike, let's make it do a little animation. Repeat four times, go to front, now repeat six times inside of that, change the brightness effect by 20, go to front layer, and then clear graphic effects at the end. So now you can see that when we touch these spikes, there we go, we do this nice flashy thing of a bob. Now in the platforms, we still have one more to do. We need to make it to where we randomly will make it a moving platform. So make it for the sprite only variable called is moving platform and we want to make it a one in three chance to be true. Here's a really cool trick you can do. Instead of doing like an if else and all that stuff, you just can do a pick random one to three is equal to one and then set that to there. So it will basically set it to false or true which is perfect and let's make it have a different move amount. So make a for the sprite only variable called platform move amount. Set the platform move amount to pick random 15 to 30. Now when I start as a clone forever if the is moving platform is equal to true then we are going to repeat platform move amount change platform x by 3 then repeat platform amount again change x by negative 3. So hopefully now we should have a functioning system to where platforms randomly will move. There we go look at that this is our first moving platform here's another one and that's all good. Now we want to make the blue ones always be moving so just go ahead and set is moving platform to true right here. So in the moving now every time it's a purple one it will always be moving. Thank you all so much for watching I hope you enjoy this episode if you did then make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing. But anyway this has been Owen and I am out.